Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. In this video, I'm going to discuss chapter three of It's Called a Breakup because it's broken. Also, if you're not following along, that's perfectly fine. You don't need to be following along to understand the topics that I'm going to be discussing, but it would be really beneficial if you were following along because honestly, these three chapters, three, four, and five, have been the best chapters that I have read and they are so true. <laughs> And I can't believe it because I'm going back and reading this as someone who's in an amazing relationship. And the first time I read this, I was clearly going through the breakup that I'm always talking about. So when I was reading it, going through the breakup, I just remember thinking, this is not true. These authors are just trying to make money. This cannot really be what's going to happen. I'm never going to get over this. And I just can't believe how profound the words are in this book, especially in chapter three, the way that the woman author goes over her story about her ex is almost spot on with a lot of the things that I went through with my ex and listening to her talk about it just made me remember all of the things that used to hurt me really bad. And one of those things that I wanted to mention, because this is a really huge red flag, is when your significant other decides or starts to pull away and doesn't want to be physical with you anymore. If your significant other no longer wants to have sex with you, it is devastating. It is such a feeling of rejection and I have been there and I just want to tell you that is the biggest red flag that they are no longer interested in you and honestly you should just start packing your bags right then and there because I don't care what excuse they give you. I have been the significant other that has done that as bad as it sounds and I'm going to tell you the truth of the matter is there's something deeper going on and most of it lies in the fact that they no longer want to be with you. And a lot of times they don't know how to get out of the relationship. A lot of times there's so many ties in a relationship. Maybe you guys have been together a long time and your families know each other and there's just so much to lose and they stay and they try to make themselves love you again. And honestly, you can't really blame someone because I have been that person and I don't want to be blamed for my feelings changing. So you really can't blame a person for deciding that you're not right for them anymore. But it doesn't make it any easier. And I know going through my breakup, I couldn't even logically think about that. I would just tell people like, shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. No, they don't have a right to break up with me. Are you kidding me? But we all do have that right. And we have the right to choose who we want to spend the rest of our lives with. But all I want you to understand is that you want to spend the rest of your life with someone who really does want to be there and doesn't want to walk away from the problems and the issues and really truly does want to work on your relationship. The main topic in chapter three that I think is really important is not to let yourself go down in flames. Don't start drinking, don't start doing drugs, and certainly do not start eating a lot to comfort yourself from feeling depressed or down. I have never been someone who indulged in anything, whether it be drinking drugs or eating. I am really the other type of person. I restrict myself. So I will restrict my happiness, I will restrict my food intake, and in my breakup I ended up losing a lot of weight. I think I was down to like 85 or 90 pounds and it was really unhealthy. I'll put a picture up here if I can, but it just was not healthy. And whatever the destructive behavior is, whether it's gaining weight, losing weight, hurting yourself, drinking or drugging, none of those things are going to bring your ex back and actually you're doing more harm to yourself and why should you do that? You're going through enough already. What you really need to do is love yourself through all of this. You are the most important person in your life and you always will be, so don't treat yourself poorly because someone else decided to do that. My biggest, biggest piece of advice, because I know I remember looking in the mirror and just not even recognizing myself anymore because I kind of let myself go and I don't mean the way that people usually take that when you say somebody let themselves go. They immediately think, oh, this person gained a lot of weight. No, it's just I did all these things in the relationship because I wanted to be accepted and I always felt rejected. So I started changing all these things about myself. And when me and my ex met, I had this beautiful, long black hair. And somehow on the course of me being pregnant and having my daughter, I became like this crazy blonde. And it just didn't go with who I am. It didn't go with my personality. I didn't feel like myself and I certainly didn't feel sexy anymore. And so I really urge you and I really hope you listen find things you can change that are that are easy to change. And for me, the first thing I did was I dyed my hair dark again. It's crazy how such a small change made a very dramatic impact 
on the way I felt about myself and my confidence and my self-esteem. So I just got a box of dye. I'll leave the link below on the color that I decided to use. And I will show you a couple pictures of before and after and show you how dramatic the change really was, even though it was something very subtle. And actually, quick little story time. I actually ended up getting that dye for free because I was shopping at Target and I was with my little girl and she was about five months at the time and I didn't have much money because I was on unemployment at the time. I was going through a really, really tough part of my life. I mean, I had lost my fiance, lost my place to live. I was back living with my mom and I hardly had any money. And I was there at Target buying her formula and buying her some baby things. And then one of the items that I had on the conveyor belt was a box of dark brown hair dye. And I got up to the register and I, I didn't have enough. And I just looked at the cashier and I just, I just gave her back the, the hair dye because that was not a necessity. As broken as I was, it wasn't a necessity. And I just knew that I'd come there for my daughter and I'd come there for my daughter's things. And I really didn't feel like the hair dye was really a necessity. And that woman, she made such an impact on me that day because she literally reached into her own pocket and pulled out a $10 bill and she said, honey, I'm going to buy you this hair dye because I, I feel it. I feel it. like I have been there before and I've been there before and you need to take care of yourself too. And she was right. And I'm compelling you to remember to take care of yourself because you are the key to your own happiness. And I know that this is silly that it's just a small thing like, like a box of hair dye, but it impacted me so much. And going home and changing the way I looked that day, it just gave me such a boost in my self-esteem. It gave me like a pep in my step. And after that, because it was my 30th birthday, which is kind of a big deal, and I was going through this horrible breakup, my friends got together and they got me an appointment to get these amazing hair extensions. And it made me feel like myself again. I had this long, gorgeous hair, and now I'm kind of doing the natural thing. And I've been doing this for a long time. I no longer really want anything fake in my hair or anything because it did kind of damage it. But at the time, it was necessary for my healing and things like that for me to feel like I did before all of this stuff happened. So for you, maybe you want to go on Instagram and get a few ideas of something you can change by yourself. Maybe you want to have a role model of some kind. It can be me if you want. Or in my case, I actually use myself as my role model. I just use my past self as my role model. And you can find someone you think has become successful or you just like the way they look. And whether it's a subtle change in your hair or you start working out and you get on a better workout program, something that you can change will really impact you. It'll make you feel like a new person. When you look in the mirror, you no longer see that broken person, but you'll see someone that you can smile at and really be proud of. So I did the hair dye, I did the extension. I also went to a secondhand store, like a Buffalo Exchange, and I decided to kind of revamp my wardrobe. So I bought things I wouldn't normally wear, like long dresses and really cute shorts and things like that. And it really helped me because you should not do more harm to yourself. If you feel like drinking, if you feel like having a lot of unprotected sex or being very promiscuous or doing the Tinder thing, I'm going to talk about dating again in another video and I really, really hope you just wait. And my point in my breakup, I had just gone through a breakup with someone who had proposed to me. So the last thing on my mind was really hooking up with new people or anything like that. So I saved myself from that drama because you could get even more hurt in those situations and the book goes into that. You really don't want to do that and you especially don't want to start binge drinking or doing drugs or overeating because none of those things are going to bring back your ex and actually your ex and everybody around you is going to start seeing you as a very weak person and what you want to accomplish is you want to accomplish becoming stronger in the situation and bettering yourself. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to do a couple more to discuss chapters four and five because this is getting pretty long. And just hang in there, guys. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them below.